Okay, so today we want to talk about gong mallets and gongs. So, chow gong, the wind gong, and your planetary gong, specifically a Meinl brand sun gong. So, depending on how soft your mallet head is and how large and heavy as well, these things will affect the sound you get out of the gong. There's, there's a lot of factors, a lot of different mallets, and as you play the gong, you can listen and notice for yourself. This is the best way to sort of fine tune your own preference. And as with anything, it's, it's always differing opinions and different sensitivities to what you hear, depending on the mallet you use. So just going with your, your main mallets, we'll just cover some of the ones we have here. These are actually the mallets that would come with a traditional Chinese gong. So a, a chow gong would come with this type of mallet and these are really basic mallets that are, are soft usually, you know, and you can always just feel and see how is the mallet, you know, different areas because sometimes like this has a little bulge here. I mean, you can just pay attention and notice, okay, so if I use this portion of the mallet at this angle, you know, I'll get a certain sound and then where you hit on the gong. And whether or not the gong's been being played for several minutes, the gong can start to change tone. It can start to react differently. So these are just experiential ways for you to sort of really be tuned in with what you're pulling out of the gong. So we, we generally here at Skinny Beats, we don't really use these traditional Chinese mouths too much. Um, they, they just don't perform quite as well. I mean, they, they perform, but if you look at your other specialty mallets, you'll notice you know, more capability, more depth of sound and, and, and those things. So these larger mallets you know, are really only gonna be utilized on a larger gong. Uh, this is a 36 inch gong, so this would be a great size where this is a uh, Ali Hess extra large uh, PGM 460. So, so this is very similar to this mallet, but it's just a little bit smaller. This is a 355. So they're both you know, somewhat soft, and they give you a really warm tone. You know, you don't hear the mallet striking the gong so much. You know, depending on so many factors, it, again, we're just, just giving you an overview so you can sort of understand like, well, I probably would want a specialty mallet if I'm gonna invest five, six, seven hundred dollars on a gong. Uh, you need to choose what preference of mallet you want besides, you know, your most basic. So a yarn mallet, this is a mallet that, um, you know, is hard and, and heavy. And so again, bigger gongs would, would be really the only gong you want to use this mallet on. Um, the Peisty brand mallets, they, they label them by number, like M6 is this size. So this, this is very similar to this mallet, you know, and there's some subtle differences. Again, the angle that you hold the, the mallet to the gong, if you're hitting more with the top end or the bottom end or just a flat surface, and then the weight is, is different. You know, this it, they're always gonna be subtlety. So hard for us to really give you that awareness, but I just kind of showing you some options and saying like, look, this size mallet, right? You can use this on a smaller gong. You know, and it has two different hardnesses, which is pretty cool in a mallet. So if you want to really get the most solid sound with the more attack, more more just you can almost hear the mallet clonking the, the gong. I love this mallet for your smaller gongs because it just really activates it and you don't have to um, switch switch between mallets if you want to go from softer to harder. And this is by TTE Kong Klong, which uh, is I believe is a German company similar to Ali Hess. Here's a very small Ali Hess mallet. It's a, uh, you can't barely read it. Yeah, M7D, I think. You know, it's, it's, it's one of their smallest ones. And that works great for your smaller gongs. It can work on a larger gong too, I mean. Sometimes we refer to this size mallet as like a roller. That, that would be maybe what this would be called too. And, and these are bass drum mallets. You know, they're not specifically made for a gong, but it's a very soft, puffy 
mallet, very lightweight. So, you know, if you hit it harder, you'll get the sound. But if you hit it really soft, you start to get a real subtle sound and that the roller concept comes in with both mallets. for yourself and listen to how they, they affect the different type of gong. Friction mallets are, are these, right? Different types of rubber are applied there, um, you know, with different finishes on the rubber. So this one's really sort of sticky. It's a certain type of, you know, effect they use to make this and, and it really grips. So you'll make a higher pitched sort of shrieking sound with this. Know, depending on how big your gong is you get a lot of different effects so it really grips you know something like this is smoother and and you can really just slide it a lot easier without it gripping It'll definitely make a different tone this is the Ollie has crazy egg mallet friction mallet so you can you can get different effects and this does not grip quite so much and now on a chow gong this this area has not been polished these are highly polished and so this actually does give you more grip or just a different effect in general so if you work from there you get a whole different sound. So just kind of paying attention to the different ways you can use a friction mallet. Again, it's going to depend on your individual gong. You know, obviously the friction mallet on the, the non-polished surface is, is a big deal. Now on a planetary gong, it's all pretty polished. So it, it's, it's, and then you can easily do more marking on the, the gong from your friction mallet. So you start to pay attention like, okay, do I need to clean the gong? Do I need to use a certain type of friction mallet so I don't really get my gong all marked up? And yes, there are many cleaners. Um, you know, by all means, call us, email us. You know, we'll answer all the questions and tell you what our experience is with different things. And all these gongs are for sale. All the mallets are for sale. And, and this is, in fact, one of my favorite mallets. It's called the uh, Lava Edition, again, by Ali Hess. So... Um, you know, you can use this mallet really on any gong. You get some really deeper, deeper sounds, you know, versus the other friction mallets, usually higher pitched. All right, how awesome is that? You need to order one of these. So, okay, um, let's just look at some of your smaller gongs just to hear how they sound. In case you're thinking, look, I don't want to spend too much money on my first gong. 22 inch. This is a 22 inch chow, and this is a 20, or no, that's a 26. This is a 22 inch wind. So these two gongs are the same diameter, but the wind gong makes a much more splashing sound, especially if you start really cranking it up. And this, with the lip on the edge, will reduce some of that splashing. You more, a little bit more like a bell tone, just like. The, the clear fundamental sound doesn't have as many overtones. Although every gong is different and you, you really should play or have a really good video of whatever gong you might be thinking about buying so you know how it sounds because just because it's a 22 inch chow gong doesn't mean it's gonna sound like some other 22 inch chow gong. They're really cool that way. All individually handmade and they're all gonna have a different tone. Like the sustain, you hear the sound continuing that varies, right? Now again, I used this really puffy mallet. If I use this really hard mallet, especially on the hard side, solid sound, more of that bell tone sound, you know, and then obviously your friction mallets, you can 
can just play around with these and, and get different different sounds. So again, it's it's experience just playing and, and seeing what it does. Here is at a 22 inch wind gong. That splash. If we use this other mallet, you know, we can um, we can hear less splash. Especially if you hit it softly. So, so many ways to just affect the sound. This is a 26. Yeah. So here's another good size. You know, when you get below 22 inches, 18 inches, you know, smaller like that, I, I personally think you, you're really kind of missing the opportunity for what a gong is really going to usually provide. Those are really just accent gongs. If you're thinking about starting out, you know, with your first gong, I do recommend, like, try to get up to 22. So you're not just, um, you know, it, 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 they start to just become accent gongs, and they're, they're cool. No, no problem, but like for a deeper tone to at least hear that that energy, you know, and feel like I got a, a instrument that's really bringing something. I think that's that's the size to try to start at. Here's the 26, going to be deeper yet than the 22. Yeah, so that's some presence with the with the deep tone, and then you get more versatility on mallet usage, you know, because you can. Can use like maybe this Ollie Hess mallet for even a softer. And it, I'm sure it's hard to, to hear exactly on the video how these sounds are with the different mallets, but if you're doing sound work like for a client or a friend, and you know you want to help them relax, and you're using the gong, just playing the gong for 20 minutes, this can help reset your nervous system. And and this this sound, this peaceful. You know, when, when you're looking to do sound therapy, generally you don't want to start getting, oh yeah, let's stimulate, because that's a stimulating sound. So we can talk more about, we're going to be doing a whole series of videos, and we can talk about sound therapy in ways that different, you know, sounds can either stimulate a person, help them sort of work through something, or take them on a little journey. But I love just the most simple sound like that. Right, and these these mallets, like this Ollie Hess mallet, these these are my, my go-to favorite mallets. I don't mind the Peisty at all either. Another soft, you know, mallet. This yarn mallet, I, I don't use too much, but sometimes I'll be using it on crystal bowls, and it's just easy to keep one mallet in hand and go from a gong to a crystal bowl. And I, you can, in fact, tap crystal bowls with this frosted, larger crystal bowls, and it's a really nice option. So I think we've mostly covered all the sounds here, you know, again, email us, call us. We're, we're downtown Asheville. We're at number four Eagle Street, Skinny Beats. Thanks for checking us out.